This is AHL Explains. I'm Anthony Ledford and today I'm going to explain momentum. Today we're going to look at the important features of time series momentum systems and to explain how they work I'm going to use this graph. So I have price vertically and the horizontal axis is going to be time. And what I'm going to plot on there is the price through time of some futures contract I'm interested in trading. Now this could be a stock index future, it could be a bond future, it could be some commodity future. It doesn't really matter because the way I'm going to analyse this is identical. Uh, the other thing we need is to know where today is. So this vertical line I've just drawn in will be today and things to the left of that are the past and things to the right of that are the future. And specifically things that happened in the past like being able to recall what the price was on each of those days in the past that's what we're going to be utilising to actually make our forecasts about what's going to happen in the future. Now the reason we want to forecast what's going to happen in the future is we want to try and make a profitable trading system and so to do that we need to forecast whether the price is going to go up or whether it's going to go down relative to where, the, where it is today. The reason for that is if the price goes up and we hold a long position then we make a profit. Similarly, if the price goes down and we were to hold a short position, we would also make a profit. And you will make losses if you hold long positions when the price goes down and short positions when the price goes up. But forecasting which way the price is going to go over this future time horizon is the key to what we're trying to do here. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to exploit a key property, and that is called time series momentum, or some people just call it momentum. Um, the way to think about this is that there is some persistence in price moves. So if prices have been going down recently, then there's a tendency for them to continue going down. And if prices have been going up recently, there's a tendency for them to continue going up. That's the basic idea that underpins these time series momentum models. So what do we mean by momentum? Well, momentum is usually associated with some time period. So if I note that this is today's price here, and I look at the price a week ago, I can ask what the momentum was over that one week horizon by looking at the trend line that joins those two prices together. And in this case, it is a positive trend if I'm facing forwards in time. So I'm going to write a plus sign there. Similarly, if I was to step back to two weeks ago and look at what the momentum has been over that two-week horizon, I can do that by joining up the price two weeks ago to the price today, and that will give me a negative sloping line, so I put a negative there. Similarly, I can look at the price over a one-month horizon by joining these two prices together. That gives me a negative slope as well, and then I can look at the price, say, two months ago and join that up to today's price, and again, I get a negative sloping line. So this is how momentum systems work. They look at trends over a range of time horizons and combine them in some way. So let's think about how we might do that. So if I take the slope lines here and write them out, I've got a negative trend over two months, a negative trend over one month, a negative trend over two weeks, and a positive trend over one week. Now I need to attach some weights to these so I can combine them. I'm going to do that by just placing equal weights across all of them. So this minus becomes a minus one, this becomes a minus one, this becomes minus one, this becomes plus one. And if I add all those together, I get the answer of minus 2. Now, if the prices had done different things, I might well have ended up with a different final score. For example, if they'd been going down consistently over all four regions, then when I've combined them, I'd have got a score of minus 4. If they'd been going down over the first two and up over the second two periods, then I would have got a total score of 0. And similarly, if they'd been going up over the last three periods, I've got a plus 2. And if they'd been going up consistently over all four periods, I'd have got a plus four. So this momentum signal here, which is what is uh, explained in this final sum across all these things, that is a variable that describes the overall direction of the price. It plus four means that it was going positively over all of the ranges you looked at. Minus 4 means it was going down consistently over all those ranges. These values in the middle mean that there was some uh, uncertainty of the price. Sometimes it was going positive, sometimes it was going negative. Now this we would call the momentum signal evaluated at today's time point. 
Now, we need to translate that into positions to hold into the markets. Well, given that we're trying to exploit the persistence of price moves, if there's a plus four here, we would actually turn that into a fully long signal. That would correspond to uh, taking a long position in the market. We've got a very consistent signal. It's been going up over all time ranges. That would mean we would end up with a fully long trade signal here. Similarly, if it was minus four, we would be holding a fully short trade signal at this point. These values plus two zero and minus two there's less confirmation there between the different signals so that you would probably end up going partly long or half long for a signal of plus two you'd go part short for a signal of minus two and in this special situation where you've got an equal number of positives and negatives these things cancel out and so you'd end up being flat i.e you'd hold no position in the market now that's really how these momentum systems work they take the price process, they look at it over a range of different timescales, they encode that information into slopes of some degree, they attach weights to those, they combine them together to give you a final score. And this is called your momentum signal. Now, most managers who exploit this type of trading system, they don't just look at slope lines. Prices don't look smooth like this. You have to do a bit more cleaning of the data. And they don't just use all equal weights as well. Some of them will attach more weight to recent price moves, whereas others would put more weight on the historically longer trends. How you go about choosing those weights is all part of the detail. But the fundamental building blocks of all of these systems look like this. Now, what, something I haven't talked about is how you actually control the risk of your trading. That's an extremely important part of what's going on, but we're not going to deal with that today. We'll deal with that next time. Thanks very much.